All right, so we got JJK 254, and honestly, this chapter is Kusakabe hype week. So, all right, let's step into it. So where we last left off, Kusakabe was pretty much the last one standing, but he's taking the stance of his new shadow style simple domain, and Sakuna's questioning why he's even doing this in the first place, but he does recognize what the technique is. But Kusakabe goes on to explain that he's doing this because in his simple domain, his curse energy will be amplified, so he'll possibly be able to dodge or block the slashes from Sukuna. So Sukuna launches some slashes at him, and surprisingly, Kusakabe is able to deflect him with this katana. And Sukuna even gives him a little, you know, respect for this. He's like, yeah, that's some respectable reflexes. In a more detailed sense, Kusakabe has been dealing with Sukuna's slashes by reading the sparks of his cursed energy, looking out for the motion, and just a bit of pure intuition. And by using Simple Domain, it's been making things a little bit easier by giving him amplified cursed energy and slowing down the slashes to make everything more reactable. But just as Sukuna was praising him, Kusakabe was almost quickly hit by another set of slashes because Sukuna was able to release his curse technique with using no motion or any sign of releasing it at all. So low-key, this is another big flex Sukuna moment where he's just able to show off his abilities with not doing anything, no hand signs, no nothing, so that's pretty sweet. We then cut to a small flashback where once again the squad is kind of gassing up Kusakabe and Nanami is saying how he's an expert swordsman with a variety of techniques and Mei Mei is saying Kusakabe is useful in any or in a variety of situations. I'm not sure why they keep doing this with Kusakabe but I'm pretty sure this is hinting that he's gonna pull off a little something against Sukuna right now. Still in the flashback Gojo goes on to praise Kusakabe saying the simple domain that he can use is quite the trump card and a lot of beginners have to use a binding bow to be able to use a simple domain. But Kusakabe can just do it. And the range for his simple domain is quite big. And as an example, Gojo brings up how Miwa's binding bow is that she can use her simple domain, but both of her feet have to be grounded to do so. So essentially, they're trying to highlight how Kusakabe can do this while he's moving, and he doesn't have to give anything up to do so. So getting back in the fight, Kusakabe senses that Sukuna is about to expand the target of his cursed technique and use the world cutting slash, so Kusakabe immediately expands his simple domain. Even Sukuna is taken surprised by this. We get a little exposition from Mei Mei saying how usually when someone uses their sword drawing, they lure their opponent in. But Kusakabe extends the range of his simple domain and gets the opponent inside that range. And he can attack whoever enters the domain automatically. And she also says, I don't know why she's saying this, but he's the type of Jujutsu sorcerer I would like to bring on a deserted island. I am not sure if she's like flirting in her mind, who knows, she's weird. Kusakabe actually gets a ton of slashes in, like a full barrage, and we were told a couple chapters ago that Sukuna's RCT was either not working at all, or it was just lackluster, it was slowing down. So this might actually do some damage. Kusakabe's sword actually breaks from all the slashes, so he just resorts to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Kusakabe ends up kicking Sukuna away, but chases him down, and he starts to think, wait, why am I trying so hard? But then he realizes it's because he's indebted to Principal Yaga. And he kind of goes on a long rant in his mind, thinking that even though Yaga's not here, he's sad because if he was here, he would be fighting with us. Back in the flashback, Gojo, Nanami, and Mei says the real reason they recommend Kusakabe as the number one grade one sorcerer is because he's kind. And Kusakabe goes on to think, you know what, I need to stop thinking about all this nonsense, because in the end, all the kids fought with their life on the line as well. So Kusakabe is putting it all out there, and he uses his Hazy Moon, which is a technique of the new shadow style, and it forms an aura which takes the shape of the missing part of his katana. So he rushes at Sukuna, but of course, Sukuna stops it with just two fingers. It says, you aimed for my heart where I was already damaged, huh? It's so painfully obvious. And unfortunately, in the next panel, we just see Kusakabe on the ground, slashed up, and Ui Ui is running over to try and teleport him to safety. But as Ui Ui is running over to teleport him, Sukuna is menacingly in the background, waiting for Ui Ui to appear. And just as he goes to kill him, Miguel, out of nowhere, shows up, and Sukuna is like, who the hell are you? And that is where the chapter ends, so hopefully there's no break next week, because yeah, this was some pretty good Kusakabe hype. Definitely a pretty good battle chapter, and I definitely want things to keep moving along. Alright, if you guys want more spoilers, more leaks, more manga breakdowns, whatever it is, definitely throw down a like, and throw down a sub, that'd be awesome. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.